<clears throat> okay, um, continuing on here, I had a, I got distracted, I had to do a, I ran out of video space on my device. Anyway, okay, so the, um, and it's important in my invention that I depict, that I describe the fact that I'm using a front fork and that, you know, a common bicycle front fork in both the front and the rear. So that's what I'm describing here. 44 and 48, 44, 48 are common front fork styles using the bicycle industry. Now I'm going through all these details so that you can get an idea of what you need to do with yours. Every part of your bow and arrow, every part of your sewing machine, every part of your game, or whatever it is, your clothing, you know, uh, maybe a zipper, or uh, whatever your widget is, every part of it has to be described and how it's used and so on and so forth, okay? So I'm describing what I've drawn. I'm describing the drawings in great detail and what it is, okay? So to continue with figure one, which is the only one I'm gonna do, in this embodiment, or this drawing, a front fork depicted as the rear wheel support. So I'm saying I've got a front fork supporting the rear wheel, uh, number 48, okay? It is uniquely utilized to attach the rear wheel. So I've got, I'm saying what's unique here is that I've got a front fork holding up the rear wheel. Okay, so I'm describing what, what's special about this bike. What, why is my invention, what is, what is special about it, okay? So I'm using the rear wheel support. It's uniquely utilized to attach the rear wheel. 42, to the rear end of the frame using the rear head tube, 61, right here. The rear fork, 48, is rigidly clamped to the frame, 45, and is not permitted to turn. Okay, so this thing is clamped to the frame so it cannot turn. No bearings are utilized for the rear fork, 48, period. Using a fork to support a rear wheel embodies figure embodies using a front fork to support a rear wheel embodies in figure one a unique recumbent bicycle with improved rear wheel attachment method. Okay? Which is what my invention is. So I've drawn a drawing of my invention. I've described it in great detail. All the parts are labeled. Because the examiner has never seen your invention before, they gotta know what you're talking about. So you, you gotta take a drawing and you like, you draw your widget so it's clear and understandable in this patentish style with all the dark lines and no shading. You're not allowed to do any shading, okay? And then you say, using a front, so in yours, using two strings on a bow and arrow embodies in figure one a unique bow and arrow with improved power uh, by utilizing two strings or um, a unique uh, using, a, um, using a second needle on a sewing machine embodies in figure one a unique sewing machine with improved sewing method or a better game embodied in figure one with unique um, improved um, functionality and novelty or something like that you know you'd have to grab some wording from a different and similar patent which is what I did. I found a comparable patent of a bicycle, a recumbent bike bicycle, and I utilized as much wording as I could from that one, okay? So you go through and you do that for every drawing. 
every drawing. So number so the second one, an embodiment of a unique pedal locating and adjustment method for front wheel drive recumbent bicycles, colon, referring prim primarily to figure two. I'm not going to go through the details on it, but there it is, okay? And all the labeling, and all the details, and so on and so forth, I go through and I describe it with all the numbers matching. And if it's, for example, the front fork, you see here, number 44, it goes to a front fork. There it is. The front fork, 44. And in the other one, there's a rear fork, 48. Not shown here, because it's the front. Well, let's go to a different drawing, and we'll find the rear fork. Here's the rear of the bike, and there's the rear fork, and there it is, number 48. The rear fork there, and there's another side view of it, 48. So let's just quickly take a look at figure 6. Um, figure 3, 4... I, uh, five and six. All right, here we go. So, ref rear wheel support angle adjustment details, referring primarily to figure six. Um, okay, so here we go. A depiction of the rear wheel attachment method as previously described in figure 1, is shown in view 100. Okay, view 100, I want you to note. View 100 right here is this view, and you have an arrow. So I'm doing like a subsection of the main drawing, but I'm referring to this view of it so it's a collective group of things, so it has an arrow, you see? Same way here, in this side view, 101. Let's see if we can find 101 over here. Uh, side view, 101. Not on this page. 101, here we go. Referring primarily to figure 6, a depiction of the rear wheel attachment method as previously described in figure 1 is shown in view 101 in profile. Okay, so in profile I guess means side view. And this is my wording, so that's probably what it means. I know what it means. Okay, so now you do this for all your drawings, and like I said, it is a pain in the rear because it's so long and it's so easy to get these numbers all screwed up. And... Uh, so on and so forth. But if you do all your drawings and you go through meticulously and label them all uh, with pencil on the drawings uh, here and in your text, you can change them easily. Um, whatever technique you use, to cho you choose to use. But anyway, so you go all the drawings have to go through this long description process. And if you do a lot of drawings, you better be prepared to do a lot of writing. Um, which I was. Now, we have completed step number nine, and now we are going to go on to step number ten, which is probably the most important part, which is writing the claims. Okay? Now, I'm going to go down to the claim section. All right, here we go. Claims, claims, claims. Now, this is the way I did it. And when I, I, I submitted several claims, and apparently you can only have one claim per invention at this time. You used to be able to do multiple ones. Um, but if you're really um, set on getting this your patent perfect and you really think you're going to make millions and millions of dollars, it might be a good thing to ask a patent attorney.
um, you might want to ask a patent attorney, can I have multiple claims in the same patent and how does that look? You know, pay them the hundred bucks to tell you that the answer to that question if you need, if you, if you're concerned about it. Um, because I, I submitted a lot of claims and I only got one claim. I did abandon uh, part of mine because after I submitted the patent, I found part of it online already. And I, I had done a lot of searching, but I'll tell you what I found. I, I did and didn't patent. So I patented the rear wheel support thing. Okay, I patented this removable rear fork. But I found, ultimately, after I'd submitted the patent, I did ultimately find a picture of a sliding adjustment of your the, the pedal assembly. Um, so when I spoke to the examiner, um, I told him about that. And he said, well, it's probably not worth pursuing that because um, we will find it. And... Uh, they no longer just search American patents. They, they search the entire world's patents and inventions. And so to me, it was like, someone's done it before. I'm not the inventor, so I simply abandoned it. Okay, so let me explain the claims because the claims can be quite tricky. All right? So let me see here. Okay. You have to write your claim in such a way that you start off with a blank sheet of paper and you end up with your invention, okay? And it can sound kind of weird when you write it. But here's how you write a claim. This is this part about writing a claim right here. And this is what I submitted and I'll also compare and contrast with what I actually ultimately got. And I'll also do a drawing by hand here in a moment to help illustrate the process. First, I'm going to read it. So you say, this is what you do. You say it like this. I claim, colon, uh, and the syntax here is, is special, and I'll go over that in a moment. But I claim a recumbent bicycle with improved rear wheel attachment method comprising... Okay, so it's my invention, which is comprised of what? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. These are the things needed to describe it. A, comprising A. A frame consisting of a straight primary frame member having the general form of a beam and having a front end and a rear end located at opposite ends of the beam. So I've, I've said, okay, I've got a beam or a frame member with a front end and a rear end. Next, B, a front head tube located and permanently attached to the front end of the frame I just described. So I've got a head tube attached to the front. C, a rear head tube located in the rear. D. A drivetrain, handlebars, and miscellaneous components located and attached to the front end of the head tube in the common method of a front wheel drive recumbent bike, as is common in the industry and known to those with skill in the art, such that pedaling the pedals turns the front wheel and causes forward motion. Okay? E, a rear wheel support, also known as a fork, commonly used in the cycling industry as a front fork, but instead used in the rear of the frame to support the rear wheel and being removably attached to the rear head tube such that it is not permitted to pivot and positioned as would be commonly known to those with skills in the art. Okay, So that just says a rear fork attached to the rear and clamped in place so it can't turn. F. A rear wheel attached 
to the rear fork. G. A seat attached to the frame and located such that a rider can pedal whilst seated. H. Further comprising all other necessary components associated with a recumbent bicycle and known to those with skills in the art, whereby the rear forks, so all of this is, what is it? It's a bike frame with a rear fork where the rear fork supports the rear wheel of the recumbent bike and the rear fork may be removed and exchanged for another style fork at the whim of the owner. Okay? That is the claim. So, I claim, one, a recumbent bike with improved rear wheel attachment method comprised of blah, blah, blah. Then, two, I claim an improved pedal locating and adjustment method for front wheel drive recumbent bicycles comprising, and then I go in to describe the uh, pedal assembly and so forth. Now, this is what I submitted, and then the examiner reviewed it, and we negotiated uh, new wording. And so the new wording came out like, where is it? It's probably online here. I think it's here. Um, claim, claim, claim. Okay, here it is. The invention claimed is. So this is the way I would have, this is the way I would word it if I was you. The invention claimed is, and you'll notice something here that'll save you some time that um, caused me a delay. I did a recumbent bike. I So this is what I submitted. I claim colon one parentheses a recumbent bicycle with improved rear wheel colon a lowercase a period space capital A blah 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 period lowercase b period space capital A blah 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 period whereas what needed to be submitted was the following the invention claimed is colon one period space a recumbent blah 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 colon space a period space lowercase a okay not a new sentence not a new sentence lowercase a blah 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 opposite ends comma okay this this, this seems ridiculous, and it is ridiculous, but I want to save you time and effort and trouble. You'll notice here on mine, I had a new sentence, an entire standalone sentence here with a period. Capital A, blah, 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 period. The next one, capital A, blah, 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 period. All right, don't do that. Do it the way that's done here. One capital A, blah, 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 colon, lowercase a, period, lowercase a frame, blah, 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 ends, comma, space, B, period, space, lowercase a, blah, 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 comma, space, C, period, A, blah, 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 comma. And then at the end, okay, and see here, I had this whereby the rear, whereby the rear, I had period, and then a new line, whereby the rear fork supports blah, blah, blah. What you actually need to do is, this is all one long run-on sentence. <laughs> and that's the way the examiners want it. And that's the way we got to do it if we want to get a patent. So blah, 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 comma, blah, 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 comma, comma, wherein the rear fork supports the rear end of the frame and the rear fork may be removed and exchanged for another style fork, period. So that's the only period and that whole shebang. It's a one sentence, okay? Now, I'm gonna to refer to the actual patent claims that were successful so you won't be more confused. That's the primary claim, all right? All under the invention claimed is one, 
a blah 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 period two. Okay, the second claim of the invention. A recumbent bicycle according to claim one. All right, so it's identical wording of claim one. It is the bike of claim one. Wherein the rear head tube is not perpendicular with the primary frame member's primary axis. Okay. Number three, a recumbent bike according to claim one. Further includes a removably attached pannier rack. Okay, so removably attached just means you've attached it, but it can be removed. And then blah blah blah. And then an interesting thing. See, these are all according to claim one, but down here on number five, it says a recumbent bike according to claim number four. So this is a recumbent bike where you have a second seat. On the back of the bike and further includes a second adjustable pedal assembly that is removably attached. Okay? And so that's what you do. You say, okay, I'm going to take my bike or my bow and arrow or my sewing machine or my, my fun baseball game, take that, and then I'm going to say, that claim one, wherein something blah, blah, blah. You say more, okay? That's how you add more, okay? That's how you write the claim. Now, I want to show you in drawing form what I did to get close to getting the claims right, okay? You want to you wanna do it, and you'll probably want to review it with a friend. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause for just a moment. Okay, maybe you have your, um, maybe you look at the patent uh, simultaneously while I draw here, okay? But this is what I did to make sure I made sense. When I was writing my patent, what I did was to read it to myself and I would draw what I was writing, okay? And that helped me to write it out. So I'm going to read what I submitted and what was patented and and I would I before submitting it this is what I did to v verify that it it actually was what I was thinking it was doing so I would draw it I would say okay a, a improved bicycle with okay a a frame with a primary frame member having a front end so let's just say we have a front end and a rear end at opposite ends and it's a primary frame member. Okay, so that can mean anything. So I connect the front end to the primary frame member, okay? B, a front, so we're gonna, I will say, I'm gonna just declare this is the front end, and this is the rear end, okay? So I don't have to try and remember, and I'm writing down what I've literally uh, submitted, okay? And this is what I did, and I recommend you do too, to make sense of it. B, a front head tube located and permanently attached to the front end of the frame, a front head tube. Okay, here's a front head tube. And then C, a rear head tube at the rear end of the frame. Another head tube, okay. Okay, then a front drivetrain, handlebars, wheels, and blah, 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 attached at the front end of the frame. So a front drivetrain, there's my drivetrain, um, uh, attached at the front of the frame. So it's attached at the front of the frame. And a wheel and a fork and all these different things and handlebars and all that stuff I said, all those things, all located on the front end. So I said that and I draw, I've now drawn it. Now E, a rear fork detachably attached to the rear head tube so that it's, that it's rigidly constrained and not permitted to pivot. All right, a rear fork at the rear end, and it is detachably attached. So I'll say, I'll pretend, okay, I got a bolt here and I got a bolt here to hold it in place. I can take it on and off with those bolts. It's detachably attached. And now when I screw these tight, it's rigidly attached and not permitted to pivot. Now it also says F, a seat attached to the frame. Uh, 
I'm going to draw it the way I want. There's a C. And then G, a rear wheel attached to the rear fork so that the rear fork wheel supports the back of the frame. Okay. Uh, wherein, so the rear fork is attached and the rear wheel is there, wherein the rear fork, this thing, supports the rear end of the frame. So if I sat in here, right there, this fork and this wheel would support the rear end. And the rear fork may be removed and exchanged. Okay, so if I loosen these bolts, I pull it off and I exchange it. So that is how you know that you've done it. Because if you draw this and you're like, well, wait a minute. I have, um, so let's say you've got a bow and arrow, and you're like, okay, a bow, a bow consisting of a, a, a top and a bottom with a com compound, typical compound bow in between the top and the bottom. We'll say top, bottom, and a uh, handle in the middle between the two, and a sight. And the next part of your claim is a string between the top and the end, bottom. And that's all you've done. Now you see your bow and arrow doesn't look like what you've invented. You need to say another claim, another part of your claim, a second string from the top to the bottom. Okay? A second string. And then for your uh, sewing machine, a uh, sewing mechanism with a base, with an attachment thing, and with a uh, sewing appendage with a needle. But wait a minute, I'm done. I need to have two needles, so I need another line of my claim. Okay, there's the second needle. Okay, I think you get what I'm saying. All right, we have now written our claims. And you write your claim for everything that you want to invent. Now, the next part I actually found to be really freaking confusing. So the next part of this is to fill in your form 37 CFR 1.63. All right, well, let's go. How do you get there? I'll, I will close these. And now I will go to uh, USPTO.gov. PTO.gov. And believe me, it's not intuitively, intuitively obvious. All right, now where do I go now? Okay, you go to patents. And you go, uh, well, wait a minute, this is the forms. We need to go to the search. And we're going to search for uh, 3-7 space CFR space 1. Whoops. 1.63 all right this is an oath okay saying that you and you believe you're the inventor so there's the form the form comes up and you need to fill it out now I've got a filled one I filled one out here uh, blah, 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 one, six, three. This is not it. This is it. Um, here we go. This is patent. This is declaration for utility design patent application. Now, I should have said at the outset, this is a, this is a utility patent, not a design patent. I've never done a design patent. So if you're doing a design patent, uh, those are a lot easier to do but I don't know how to do them. You just need to look at a design patent. They're just a whole lot easier. Um, so this declaration is for utility or design. So here we go. You need to fill this form out and here's how, because it's confusing. This is gonna be a declaration submitted with initial filing. So you're gonna fill this out and you're gonna submit it when you file. And it's a digital thing, you can do it. What's the first name of the, in what is the first named inventor? That's me, Joseph Patrick Volk Jr. What is the filing date? Uh, I think I made that up, like today. Whatever the day is, you know, that you know you're going to submit it. And it also says, complete this if you know. So, 
you don't know the application number because you haven't submitted it. You don't know the art unit. You don't know the examiner. You don't have one yet. Anyway, filing date, just put in what you can. Okay, blah. Okay, write your title of your invention. What is it? This is the title. Mine was recumbent bicycle with improved rear wheel support and pedal locating method. Yours will be whatever you want to make it. Then, the application of which was made or was it authorized to be made by me and is attached here too. Don't let that wording throw you off. It's all legal jargon and crap. This is how you do. Click on is attached here too. Then, authorization to permit access to application by participating offices. Yes. So if checked, I granted the USPTO authority to provide my information inf to world organizations. So I wanted my patent to be recorded with other patent and trademark offices around the world. You may not want to do that. I did. So I would hopefully have more strength in those countries when, you know, Joe Blow over there tries to steal ideas from me and it's already patented in that country. All right, declaration, claim of foreign priority benefits. No, I didn't do that. I don't know if you will. You'll have to make your own decisions there. Uh, correspondence address is below. This is my name and my correspondence address and my email address. Didn't put a phone number in there. Now... Below this is the name or soul, name of the sole inventor or the first inventor. <coughs> Excuse me. That's all. The given name, the family name, inventor's signature, I, I put it in there like that. I never actually signed it by hand. Um, but this is what I submitted, and it worked. All right, so that is the form 37. You fill that out, and then you fail a PD, save a PDF copy of it, and you'll submit it, which we're going to go over in a moment. All right, next you want to do a form uh, PTO backslash SB slash 15A. This is a declaration of micro entity status, meaning um, <clears throat> you get cheaper rates and you're not a big corporation or anything like that. And here's how you fill that one out. Certification of micro entity status. There's a PTO SB 15A, you know. It's this ridiculous. Don't even try to find it. Okay, here we are with the uh, uh, I ran out of data again on my thing, my device. But anyway, this is a certification of micro entity status form, PTOSB 15A. Um, as I've shown you here, this is how you find it, USPTO.gov. You just search for that that form; it, it'll come up, um, and this will get you reduced rates. So anyway, uh, you're going to submit this. With, uh, as a PDF document along with your uh, files. Um, so you've got your first named inventor, which will be you. Uh, and you've got the title of the invention. You don't know the patent number. You don't know anything about it other than you are the, the inventor and the title that you're giving it. Signature, you put that in there. Name, you put that in there. The date. And uh, save it as a PDF, and that's that. Okay, so now we have completed step number 12, and we're going to do step number 12A, which is submit your document. So now you have you have your uh, you have a document which is your abstract, your description, and blah, blah, blah. You haven't made the mistake I did, and you've got a number on the pages, either at the top or at the top and the bottom. All right? 
that's what I made a mistake of and, and you won't because I'm telling you and you've got it all in one big document and you have your uh, drawings all perfectly drawn and labeled and everything like I've taught you how and um, blah 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 and um, that's ready to go and then you've got your uh, oath all ready to go that we just did all filled out ready to go in the PDF format and your uh, you've got your uh, certification so these are all documents on your PC already get set and ready to submit now here's also something that's so confusing but I won't whine I whined in the first video um, USPTO.gov let's go and submit USPTO.gov All right, so we're going to go to patents, and we're going to whoop, patents, and we're going to file online. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to file online. Whoa, where do we go? Oh my God, they don't tell you anything. Prioritize exam, accelerate. Well, how do I file online? It should be so easy. All right, so no, it's not. You go to EFS Web. About EFSF. Oh, more documents. Now what? Okay, so the next thing you do, wouldn't you think the easiest approach, there'd be a no-brainer approach to this? No. Launch EFS Web Unregistered eFiler. You may see here, alternative filing method. Okay, that basically, I checked it out today. That translates into a paper, submitting paper documents or faxing it in. Uh, I didn't do it that way, and go for it. If you want to give it a try, but this technique is going to be the e-filer method, which I had success with. So now, I, we are unregistered, not registered. We're unregistered e-filers. So ignore this crap. Now sign on as an unregistered e-filer. So you will... Put in your name and uh, your last name, uh, Doe, first name John. I'll put my name in there so it doesn't puke, my email, so it doesn't puke on the email. Existing? No, this is not existing. This is new. New application proceeding. Is it a utility? Is it a design? International? Blah, blah, blah. This is a utility patent you're doing. Now, do you want to submit a track one prioritized examination? Blah, blah, blah. I didn't. It's new. It probably gets a little faster, but they'll probably charge you $300 or $500 or $1,000. I don't know. So, um, is it accelerated exam? No. It's non-provisional application under 35 USC. Not provisional. It's a non-provisional. And then you go continue. And you type in your title. This is my patent. A super awesome double string bow. And I don't have an attorney, but my first name is John, last name not required, I mean middle name not required, last name Doe. All right, now, enter a customer number for correspondence. Uh, or provide an address to where we should send it. So it's a correspondence address you want. I'll put in mine, P.O. Box. Box 411. Oh no. John Doe. P.O. Box 411. It's a state country USA. Gosh, why can't they have USA at the top? Aren't we in the United States? Whoops.
Okay. The United States. Uh, state of Washington. Zip code 98027. Uh, continue. Let's see what happens. All right. Now, attach the documents and title them. Now, all you do here is uh, you browse for your files and you uh, submit them. Category. Is it a... Um, Amendment application part change request first action. Um, this one I'm not sure of. I don't remember. Let's see if we can figure it out. I'm going to pause while I try to figure it out. Okay, I believe what this would be is a general transmittal. Again, they're not real clear on what it is. It's none of the other ones. It's just a general transmittal. And then you would uh, browse for your document and then you would say in here, um, what is it? Transmittal of new application. That's what it is. So you get all your files and you would do them as a general transmittal and a transmittal of new application for everything on this one. Okay? And your PDF file contain multiple documents. Well, if you've got your drawings in one and your, your description in the other, then no, it won't contain multiple documents. But, you know, it just depends on how you do it. But that's how you do it. Um, and then you, um, I can't go through the whole thing, but you can review the documents you're submitting. And up here, you see the top, you review the documents you're submitting because you, uh, you can review and then upload and validate. It says upload and validate before review. Now I had a little trickiness with that, and I think it was because it was a PDF versus a doc. But this is how you do it. The rest, this is all no-brainer stuff. Review the documents, and then it'll say calculate your fees. That's very easy. Um, confirm and submit. Okay, so that gets you submit. And then you pay your fees all online, and you'll be done. And then you get your uh, receipt from them which you will want to save. Now, this concludes the demonstration. This is it. We've done step uh, 1 through 13, which is really there's a 12A and 12B, so it's uh, actually 13, 14, 15 steps. <laughs> I hope that this uh, helps you to be able to submit your patent and that uh, you're successful. Uh, if you've watched video one, you've heard all the, the uh, disclaimers about, oh my gosh, anyway. <laughs> I, they just make it so hard. Hopefully, uh, you will be able to add notes to this video uh, for people who are going to watch this and submit, and you can show, share your lessons learned, and we can beat the system by helping each other submit patents and bypass all those darn lawyers who uh, are making a lot of money off of this freaking scam of a process, and um, teach the patent office a lesson that, hey, we need some help out here, some real common sense help on how to do this. Now, this process in general is so easy yet they make it so hard and this could have been easily done by somebody who's you know the government has a lot of money they could have made an animation of it and said all the things that I said they could have done so easily but anyway um, let's see if you really like this video 
um, and it saved you a lot of money, shoot, why don't you uh, why don't you donate some money to me and say thank you? I not ask I'm not asking for money. I don't need it, but if you submitted a little donation to me, I would not reject it. Um, I have a PayPal account, and if you ask for my details, I will tell you what it is, or I'll post it in the notes or something like that. So I hope this helped you. Um, and I, what I really hope is that you watch some of my other videos about unconditional self-love and how we can love ourselves. Um, this this email is general. This this video, I mean, is mostly simply an act of love for you because I love myself and I love you too, and I wish you all the success in the world and all the happiness in the world. Take care, and I love you. Good luck. <laughs> And tell me about your successes, please. I had a little bit of an afterthought. Um, I forgot to mention that what happens next um, once you submit the um, your paperwork to file your patent. Uh, what happens next, as I mentioned, is you'll get a receipt from them saying that uh, you you submitted. And oops. You get a receipt saying that you uh, you submitted a uh, patent application, and with that you'll get an application number, and that will be your number that you can refer to going forward uh, if you want to contact the patent office. So, so what happens next? Um, what happens next is that um, several months will go by, and then you'll get some sort of an, uh, a letter in the mail saying that they received your uh, application. And then the uh, application, they'll tell you the status, like it's being reviewed or something like that. And that's the part I was talking about where they are reviewing the wording and the uh, drawings to make sure that they've comply you're complying with all of the mumbo jumbo that they want you to, which I outlined for you so you shouldn't have any problems. Um, so that's what happens, and then um, once that, what if you get through perfectly the first time, you won't have to do any changes. You probably will. What'll happen is they'll send you a letter, and it'll be in some weird jargon, but you can figure it out what it means. Um, they'll tell you what you need to change, and so you'll maybe your numbering is wrong, or maybe your lines aren't dark enough, or maybe this, or maybe that. You'll need to change that and resubmit the new um, drawings or wording or document or whatever it is. If it's missing, they'll, something they'll say so. So that process will probably take, you know, anywhere from six months to a year, really. Um, and then once that's complete, um, then it will be issued to an examiner for examination. And that examiner is the person is a patent and trademark examiner, and that person will read your examination, your uh, patent, and he will also, or she will also say, this is wrong, or this is right, or blah, 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 or blah, blah, blah. And you remember what I was saying in there about the claims, how I had written the claims incorrectly? Um, that is some of the feedback that I received from this person. Also, remember I mentioned about the abstract that needed to be changed uh, to make it clearer. Um, that was some of the feedback I got. Now they're not examining it yet, okay? Because when they examine it and they make their a decision or uh, adjudication, um, which is the decision, same as the word as a, de a decision, um, they're gonna, they're, they're just reviewing it to make sure it, you've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's and use all the right wording and blah, 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 blah. And um, then once all that is done, which is another six months or a year or whatever, you know, um, then they'll actually examine it, the claims and make a decision and then, then it'll be done. And then they'll send you some more information and you'll probably have to do some more bumbo jumbo. And then um, they may send letters about fees and all this type of stuff. and. Then finally, the examiner will tell you on the phone that he's examined it and he's approved, going to approve it or not approve it or something like that. And um, then it will be issued, hopefully. 
One thing I would like to say is that when you contact the examiner, you guys will communicate by phone. Um, have your shit together, okay? He is not your, they're not your friend. He or she is not your friend. They are not there to help you. They are lawyers, like lawyers, and they, um, they can guide you, but they're not in your corner at all. So don't be confused about that. The, they will contact you and say they want to talk to you or have an appointment. When they do, treat it very seriously uh, in the regards of having everything your ducks in a row and be prepared to talk about your patent in great detail. Because what can happen, and happened to me, is um, I was a little blasé about it and lackadaisical and I hadn't thought about my patent in ages. And when the guy contacted me, he didn't say, you know, you need to have all this stuff ready because I'm going to ask you some really hard questions about your patent. I wasn't prepared for that. And so um, when he did talk to me, though, that's what happened. So I wasn't prepared. And um, basically, you don't get a lot of phone calls with these people. You get maybe one or two conversations, maybe a few more. But when you talk to them, you need to be prepared, very well prepared, and do your homework. And keep in mind, they aren't there for you to like them or them to like you. They're there to do a job. They're not in your corner, so don't get confused about that. Don't think, I'm going to be nice to this person, and then they'll be nice right back to me. You can be respectful, but don't expect uh, sucking up to them to do any good at all, because it won't. <laughs> That's it. Good luck.